Hi everyone, this is Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today I'm going to show you how to set up this Beta rack behind me, also known as a Beta Barracks. And I've seen lots of videos on this, and I've dug through the internet, and I've been working on it for a long time. And I can't find someone that explains how they do it. They'll kind of, I, I found some blog articles and some pictures, but uh, this is going to show you exactly all the steps I did. And let's take a look at what it's doing now. So it's basically a gut, your standard gutter system, and we've got water coming in, and I have a sump down below, and uh, yeah. So if this is something you want to look how to build, like if you're breeding bettas or you just need to house a bunch like I do for the store, um, this is a great way to do it, and um, yeah, so stay tuned. The first step here is to find your studs in the wall. And if you couldn't do that, well, you, you do need to be able to do that, but if the studs aren't going to work the way you need to, you need to put a board along the back so you can screw into that wherever you need. Uh, I'm just going to use the studs in the wall for this project. So, uh, same principle though, we put a backer board, then just go into that. Uh, what we're going to do is, I'm starting where I think I want the top, and I put a spot right here. This is 66 and 1 quarter inches off the ground, okay? maybe three eighths. Then over here, about three feet away, I've got another one, this is actually 32 inches away, but I've got another one, this one is exactly 66 inches. So, this one is taller, that one is shorter. So, we're gonna have a very gradual slope down to the other one, you know, by under half an inch. And what that's gonna do is make the water run to that corner for us. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and install the brackets and uh, install the first piece so you can see what we're doing. To cut the vinyl gutter, we're going to use a, um, a chop saw here. And it's best if you actually put the blade on reverse. It'll cut better. But I find this does okay as well, so I'm just going to do it real quick. And just like that, even with the blade going normal, we still got a pretty good cut and uh, cut the two pieces. And you can go ahead and make all of your cuts at this point. I'm just going to make one because I'm still prototyping. But I believe I want three foot sections and you could do this to any length. But uh, So yeah, I'm going to show you the next step. So the next thing you're going to need are these end caps. And, you know, unfortunately they're expensive. They're like 350 each. And they're a real pain to get on there. So I'm not going to show you watching me struggle to get these on, but uh, they got to be all the way inserted to the back here. So you've got this much clearance and you get a good tight seal. I'm going to put two of those on and then I'm going to I'm going to put it on the wall just so you can see what we're going to do here. And uh, we'll chime in in a minute. So this is what the first row will look like. Uh, I don't have it snapped in yet. I just kind of have it resting there. And you can, you know, you can snap this in here and it'll be more sturdy. But, um, so now we need to plan how the water is going to come out. We need to put like a bulkhead or something like that coming down to the next row. Um, so I'm going to do that. We're going to drill a hole on the back side here and uh, put a bulkhead in. For the next step, you're going to have to drill a hole to put a bulkhead in. And you're going to want to use the normal hole saw, one that fits it. I'm putting a one inch bulkhead in here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll show you after that. So essentially, we have a bulkhead installed now, and it gives us a hole that we can use for plumbing. We do a dry fit and check and make sure that we have, you know, measured correctly, and uh, looks like it's going to be just fine. Enough play that I can move it around a little bit as I'm installing it. So, next, I'm going to install my other rows, and uh, then I'll show you um, what we're going to do to put the bettas in, and then the fill lines and all kinds of things. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got done on the betta barrack system so far. We can kind of talk about it and analyze it before we move on to the next step. So don't mind this bar on the way here. I'm doing it behind this as part of my water changes and for my aquariums. But we've got the top one installed. It drops a half an inch, comes down, this is just friction fitted in here. We're going to glue it in. Uh, the water comes down into this one. This is the high point on this side. And it's a half inch lower on this side. And we have the bulkhead come down to this one. Now the reason this one's not three feet long is I have a power outlet here. So you might have to do some adapting as well. Uh, so water comes down here. 
Then it comes down a half an inch. You see the water pools up here, not here at all. And you kind of have the same thing going on almost. And this one, this angle's a little bit more rigid because it's a half inch, but it's a half inch to here as opposed to a half inch to here. And then the 20 gallon sump down below where the water's gonna go down. So now, uh, let me just go ahead and, you know, I'll demo that for you. The trick, you know, as I'm learning here, is you don't want flow to go too crazy fast. If I just dump this thing of water in there, it's gonna splash a little bit. And so instead, I'm gonna pour it slowly like the drip system or, you know, what I'll have going on here in the, in the, the barracks. But we're basically just pouring water in and we can watch water come out that one. And we've got water coming down that one. And it's going down into our sump down there as well. So the system currently will move water the way I need it to move water. And that's the important part is now that we've got water draining, we can start playing with uh, getting water to come in. Because it does you no good if you can bring water in, but you can't get water out fast enough or in a timely manner. And that's why I'm using one inch bulkheads. This will let me drain the water a lot faster than half inch or something like that. You may be able to devise a system that's gonna use half inch, but you'll wanna use much slower flow, um, which could be okay as well. But I'm just using one inch because it's what I have on hand. Uh, so the next thing, uh, I'm gonna use deli containers like this. And so the next thing I have to devise is how I'm gonna get these to sit in here. A couple of things. One, if it sits in there and the bed is down, you know, in the bottom of this container, you wouldn't be able to see it. So ideally I want them to sit up high. And um, so we're gonna devise a system and I believe we're gonna use metallomat for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut some metallomat right now and I'm gonna fit it in and then I'll show you how I cut it and all those things and so you guys know how to build it as well. So stay tuned. All right, so what I thought was gonna work will work and that is the metallomat. And what this is, this is basically plastic that's kind of honeycombed and stuff like that. They use it in koi filters and it's Japanese metallomat. And it's also gonna provide us some biological filtration and uh, things like that. Uh, I might test another layer here just to see how it looks, but you know, right now we're getting pretty good. Um, you know, I'd say let me let me sit down here and get a better look for you. But there's not, you know, best case scenario we raise it that much. You know, there's not that much we're missing, and I don't want to raise the water up too much because if it ever got sat too far, something could leak. So. Um, I think that's about perfect, honestly. So that means that I need to cut a couple of more and I'm gonna show you guys and talk you how to do that real quick. And I'll put a link in the description of this video on where you can buy some metallomat. And uh, you know, it's a little, I wanna say it's a little expensive for buying plastic, but what isn't? I mean, this is expensive, these are expensive, it's all plastic, so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go over to the station where I was cutting it and give you some tips. So here's some metallomat, and uh, I've used it in the past. So there's you know like some moss on it. I was using it as a background, but um, to cut it, you're gonna need like a serrated knife. That's the easiest way I've found to do it. I bet if I had my table saw set up, that might be super easy also. But this is pretty easy, and everyone owns a kitchen knife. So all you've got to do is get yourself like a piece of wood and I'm just using this table here and we're using three inch I, I cut out three inch um, sections and that's what fits in the bottom of that gutter and so all you do is you pull you know you pull this to the edge of the table here and you just want to get so you've got basically three inches over here three inches in the middle and three inches at the end. So pull that out a little bit there. We'll go back and check it. So yeah, we've got three inches. And then all we're gonna do is kind of stabilize our hand here, you know, and kind of just hold it down. And with the other hand, we're just gonna make cuts. And we just, you know, that's just sawing motion back and forth. It'll take you about, I wanna say 45 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just, I'm gonna make a couple of them right now because I know I need at least two more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll move on to the next step.
So we've got all our metallic mat fitted. Got it in all three trays here. And uh, you know, got a little wonky over here because I'm using extra pieces, but and we'll see how it goes when I'm putting uh, the actual fish in there. So on to the next part. All right, so next, we want to control the flow. Once we start putting water into these, if we don't put any holes or anything, water's just gonna come out the top and fish could jump and things like that. So what I'm gonna start with is an inch and a half down. So I just measured with a tape measure and marked it. And then I've got a soldering iron here and we're just gonna put some holes in it. And so it goes very easy. I'm gonna try, let me, yeah, I'm gonna try it with my left hand here and see if I can do it. Um, but it's kind of hard to watch the camera and so my soldering iron is still heating up, so it's going to take a second here. There we go, we're starting to go through. When this thing's hot, it'll just poke right through instantly. Alright, and then we're going to use the camera here to get this back off. There we go. So now we've got one hole in there. Let's go ahead and do the second. And I'm going to put three holes just to be careful. or certain that if one was to ever plug up, I've got backups. So there's two. And here comes a third. Alright, we're just going to use that again. Alright, so now, unplug my soldering iron. I'm going to do a bunch of those later, but just so I'd show you guys, that's how I'm going to set the level. That wasn't necessarily the cleanest one I've ever done, but it also wasn't super hot, but um, yeah, and so you can see we've got some bettas up on the wall here that currently would be about a little more water than what's in there and uh, you know you can put that to the side or something like that I, I don't know what the best way is going to be yet I think the side would be the safest but you know imagine we just put a bed in there full of water and here it goes it's changing water like that so um, you know we're going to have to now devise the fill system and I've devi devised fill systems before I use it on all the tanks that are around me they're all auto water changing and things like that so I'm gonna try and see if I can make one that's super cheap because it's gonna be a low pressure system if I can't then I'll show you the more expensive way but the more expensive way would be something like this where you use thick walled pipe and we put in these are like you know almost two bucks a piece and we'd fill that way but I'm going to try and do it with um, kind of a plastic air valve and see if I can't make that work. If I can, great. If I can't, well, let's we'll have to do it the expensive way. What can you do? So uh, stay tuned. So to drill uh, the fill lines, we're using a drill and a drill bit. And the drill bit is 3 16 That's very important. So what happens is, here's what we've already done. To use these plastic bits, you need to drill a hole that is ever so slightly smaller than what we're going to shove through it. And then you end up with, I don't know if I'll we'll be, we'll be able to make this happen, but you can see inside there all the parts going through. And it basically, you know, you basically shove it into the hole and the plastic expands kind of around the hole in a low pressure system that will work um, or at least should work if it you know if you're sloppy when you're drilling or you know use different ones that I'm gonna put a link to in the comments you could have other things this is the same way I do all the air systems so when uh, if you look at our video on how we do an air system same technique but basically we're just gonna drill the holes real easy I'm just gonna do this on camera And we, we traced out everywhere we wanted to drill the hole by putting the beta containers where they were going to go. And there's only eight holes since we're only putting eight per shelf because it's a small shelf. And last one. All right, so we've got those eight drilled. Next, you grab your plastic, your plastic little valves, airline valves here. 
and you're just gonna work it in there and that's you can see it's a really tight fit like you really have to jam it in and then you do the next one and if they just drop right in you've made you've used either used the wrong size drill bit or you were not straight when you're drilling it in there we go and that's all there is to it, honestly. You're just going to keep doing that. And then I'll show you the next part where we uh, basically glue... Well, I'm not going to show you how to glue it together. I'll show you it on the wall. And, you know, you're obviously going to use some PVC glue and tees. And, you know, you're going to fit it to the design you need. But I'll show you what my design is going to look like. So that way you kind of know what you're getting into. So you're looking at a cobalt power head. It's like the 296 gallon per hour one, brand new. And a piece of tubing. And then we're going to put this uh, to adapt the tubing so we got a cinch it on there because the tubing is a little bit bigger this is 5 8 tubing and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then the other side of the tubing is going to go to uh, a PVC fitting or a, a barb fitting that connects to the the manifold that we've made and you can see here basically it's going to connect right where that open spot is so the piece of pipe goes up and we're going to fill this line. It also travels up a little more, fills that line, and then travels the rest of the way up and fills that line also. Now, the hardest part here is, since I haven't built these before, I have no idea if that power head is way too strong, not strong enough, because 300 gallons per hour is going to round to that, and we've got, you know, roughly 30 containers, so we're about 10 uh, 10 gallons per hour, you know, through each one in theory, but um, there's head height. You know, the higher we pump that water, the harder the pump has to work. And so, ideally, I want the slowest amount of flow that I could possibly have going through these so it doesn't whisk up the bettas and things like that. And so, I'm hoping this is about right. We're going to see. You'll, you're, you're on this journey with me, but uh, this is how you build the system. I'm liking it a lot so far. And I'm going to do a little more building here and get these parts connected and then we'll test the system. So the system is up and running at the moment. Uh, you can see here we've got some different flows going. That's what I'm playing with now is the flow. Uh, I ran into a problem. It actually runs way faster than I would have expected. But um, so like right now you can see I've got, I've got this one turned off. This one's barely going. This one's going faster. And you can see kind of the sediment. Now, here's the problem. So let's see, you know, so that's, that's why I said you want like the slowest flow possible. Let's see if I can do this here. Let's say I turn on a little bit. All right, so we've got that much water going in. I, I'm thinking that might be like perfect, you know, um, for these bettas. But. If I crank it to what the flow could max out, as you're going to see, this beta is not going to do well. So let me just open it up here. And so now, like you could maybe clean the water this way, but you can see this beta is going to get tired out and just die. Like those are the live black worms. Water is coming out the side, you know, pretty quick. And, um, you know, that's probably a way I could, you know, flush these if I needed to flush them to get debris out, which I don't think I necessarily do, but you know, that's it's going to be stressful on the beds to have flow that high. So I think the trick is to have, you know, I think like something like that where it's just constantly dripping for these guys. And uh, yeah, you can see here, like even that's probably too fast. So that's the DIY beta barrack system rack, whatever you want to call it. That's how I did it. Start to finish. Had it in my brain. Planned it all out and did it in a day. Seems to be working well. Uh, you know, go ahead and comment down the road. Ask if it's still working. I bet you I'm building bigger and better ones anyway. I'll figure out better things to do. But uh, if you like what we're doing, go ahead and give us a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. We do this kind of stuff all the time. We're building stuff every Friday. I'm showing you either how to breed something, how to build something, how I did something. Uh, Thursdays in the fish room, I kind of just show you what I'm doing. 
uh, you know, like today it would have shown you how I was building this and all the other fish and breeding and what new fry I have and things like that. So general fish nerd talk, which I'm into. And then on Sundays we do real fish talk with Lamont and myself. We answer your guys' questions. We talk about topics. We disagree. We give you the lowdown. And we don't sugarcoat it. We don't go, oh, well, this person's sponsoring us, so we better uh, be nice to them. No one sponsors us. No one likes us because uh, we tell the truth. So uh, go ahead and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. I appreciate you watching, and we'll talk to you later.